Malaria is something that I work on a lot and I've worked on for a while. There are many parts of Africa where it is very, very common. And in some of the places that I've worked, like Western Kenya and Central Uganda, Eastern Uganda, people can expect a couple of malaria episodes a year. It is one of the most common reasons for lost earnings from work and missed schooling, in addition to being one of the leading reasons children under five die, and one of the main causes of poor outcomes for women delivering babies. If you go by a public clinic in a malaria endemic area, the lines are enormous. <laughs> so you'll see lines just wrapping around. People have to wait hours to be seen for a simple uncomplicated, they call it, malaria episode. And what's striking is that bed nets can prevent those malaria episodes. People don't use mosquito nets for the same reason that people don't go to the gym in the US and don't get flu shots and don't do a lot of things that we know are good for us. In general, we kind of know that people are more likely to treat a disease or an illness or a condition than they are to prevent it. And I think in a lot of ways we face the same behavioral and psychological issues around um, net usage. Sleeping under a net, um, which is impregnated with insecticide, both protects you from being bitten and potentially kills the mosquito from the insecticide. But we don't quite know how to get people using them appropriately. And that's where health economists like me come in to think about the most effective and cost-effective ways of actually getting people sleeping under a mosquito nest. So how do we do that? Around 2006, 2007 was just the beginning of you know, trying to find ways to really distribute these things on a mass scale. And one of the biggest questions was, what should we charge for them? We know that people can't afford $6 for nets, so we have to subsidize them. But what's less clear is how much. Two models are currently used for a lot of health products. So one is just give it for free because these are really poor populations. We know we want to get as many people sleeping under them as possible. But there's also a lot of good reasons to think that you should charge something for them. And anecdotes abounded about why you should charge something for these nets. If you give them away for free, it's just like a big waste giveaway. People will fish with them, they'll use them for wedding veils, they won't sleep under them. You've got to charge something for them in order to encourage people who will use them and value them getting them. Pascaline Dupont and I, an economist, she's an economist at Stanford, decided to put some rigorous science behind that question and we asked, well, what does happen if you make the nets free instead of charging 75 cents for them? And what we found was that even small prices for bed nets led to really dramatic reductions in coverage. But you don't gain anything in terms of usage. So in other words, the chances that a woman who got a free net were sleeping under it a month later when we visited them at home was the same as the chances that a woman who paid 60 cents was sleeping under it at home. So in other words, what you're losing in terms of coverage is not being made up for in terms of um, usage and so it's led to a more general understanding that um, charging even small prices for preventive health products like this can really be counterproductive. This is the science that we need to get us you know, further toward zero malaria deaths.